A warm welcome, everyone. I, Dr. Shulagna Datta, Head of Services Research and Senior Lecturer in Physiology, Faculty of Dentistry, Massa University, would like to welcome all of you in a distinguished webinar today by our special invited guest, Professor Gabby Caspo. I am very fortunate to introduce him to all of you. Professor Gabby Caspo is a specialist in orofacial pain and temporomandibular joint disorders. He is clinical assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry, School of Medicine, Wayne State University. Today, he will be talking on temporomandibular joint disorders and musculoskeletal pain diagnosis and management. Professor Caspo has been practicing dentistry primarily in the field of orofacial pain management and TMJ disorders for the past 30 years. His scholastic achievements include a DDS and a D-Ortho from Damascus University, a DDS from the University of Detroit Mercy, and a certificate of training in TMJ and orofacial pain management from University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey. He also earned a diplomat from the American Board of Orofacial Pain and Diplomat American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine. He served as a president of the American Academy of Orofacial Pain 2017 till 2018. He serves as the chair of the Council of AAOP. Dr. Caspo is a diplomat of the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine. He has written numerous articles related to TMJ imaging, fibromyalgia in TMJ patients, and sleep disorders in TMJ patients. He also authored chapters relating to headaches, sleep disorders in TMJ patients. And TMJ in fibromyalgia and cone beam CT and the diagnosis of temporomandibular mandibular joint diseases has also been his topics that he authored on. His practice is exclusively devo devoted to treating orofacial pain and TMJ disorders patients. Dr. Caswo is also a staff at St. Joseph Mercy Hospital of Pontiac, Henry Ford of Macomb. I welcome our honorable speaker, and I would like to request my esteemed colleague, Professor Dr. Ratna Sothi, to say a few words on Prof. Kaspo and to welcome him to the podium. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Lok uh, Dr. Lok Slokna. And I am really overwhelmed uh, at the presence of uh, Dr. Gabi Gaspo, who actually uh, was known to me through my good friend and classmate, Dr. S.G. Prasanna Kumar, who is an orthodontist at, in Detroit, at Roseville, Detroit. And uh, I, I, I got to know him through uh, Dr. Kumar, and I really, I feel so uh, uh, proud to have him here at Massa University, where I teach at the Faculty of Dentistry. And I'm proud uh, that uh, he has agreed and, and uh, agreed to uh, present himself at Massa University. And if you notice at the background, he has put up a Massa University emblem. And uh, thank you, Dr. Caspo, for uh, displaying Massa University. And uh, I would like now to introduce uh, Dr. Caspo, as uh, Dr. Slokna has already mentioned. And he is a good orofacial pain man with uh, temporomandibular dis, uh, dysfunctions. He will give you a good insight into uh, maxillofacial and TMJ uh, disorders. Thank you so much, Dr. Slokna, for the kind uh, time that he gave me to introduce Dr. Caspo too. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Prof. Sati to introduce our honorable guest. Now, I would like to request Prof. Caspo to take over the podium. Over to you, Prof. Good morning, uh, good evening, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, it's my honor to be here 
uh, today, this evening, uh, to share some of the information or knowledge that I have with the dental students and the colleagues around the world. I'd like to thank Dr. Professor Ratna Sudhi and Professor uh, Sulagna for their kind invitation. Uh, it's an honor for me to uh, present uh, through the Massa University platform uh, today's lecture. Uh, I just let you know that I've been in uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, gave a lecture years ago and enjoyed the visit there. Uh, without further ado, I would like to share my screen and start the presentation. I would like to start with this small uh, video uh, from Michigan with love. Now today, uh, or these days we are the fall and we have a lot of snow already started. Uh, this, this video is not really to show you uh, the snow or to show you the weather in Michigan. It is more about uh, tomorrow when you go back to practice and uh, you, uh, you start seeing their first patient, second patient, and uh, if you, face uh, some of the patients with team D uh, problems or with oral facial pain, what do you do? Uh, what, what, why, why we should uh, look back and think? Uh, this presentation will not make you a, uh, a pro in evaluating team G patients. It will help you understand and evaluate and diagnose the patients. As, as you see, this man is struggling uh, to clean his car. Uh, the same thing, you'll review your, your uh, patient's charts. Uh, you get ready to see them. So, uh, that enough to, to let you aware of, of uh, what we are going to talk uh, in the future or for the next hour or so. Uh, first of all, I would like to take the opportunity to talk about uh, some basic anatomy of the team joints and the masticatory muscles. As we know that temporomandibular joint is located in front of the ear and considered an articulation between the base of the skull and the condyle of the mandible. The temporomandibular joint has consists of the articular fossa, the glenoid fossa, that's what we call it, uh, the articular eminence uh, or uh, the uh, tubercle, uh, we call it most mainly the eminence. Uh, we have the condylar head that slides on uh, articular eminence. Uh, between the condyle and the temporal bone or the fossa, there is what we call the, the disc or articular disc. I prefer sometimes to call it meniscus. Uh, I'm not sure really when we will be changing this uh, terminology. The joint is capsule encapsulated within some uh, ligaments, and this is very important for the function of the team joints. <clears throat> the disc is a fibrous, dense fibrous tissue. Uh, it has a couple of zones. Uh, we see here the posterior border has a uh, thicker, uh, edge, uh, and the intermediate zone is very thin comparing to uh, the anterior border and the posterior border. And it's a dense fibrous uh, tissue. Uh, as you see, is this the disc has what we call uh, a, like a bow tie shape uh, and is seated in the 11 o'clock position and the condyle. We have two movements of that condyle and, and the mouth opening. We have the rotation movement, which takes us uh, to about uh, 15 to 25 millimeters of opening. And then we have the gliding movement where it extends another 25 millimeters. And the 25 millimeters and the 15 to 25 millimeters of the open, the hinge 
movements, it total about 42 uh, <clears throat> to 50 millimeter um, uh, normal mouth opening. Does not mean we always have to look for 40 to 50. We have some normal range of motion, less than 40, 35, if the patient is small with small mouth. And we have over 60. That means patients have probably most likely hypermobility of the joints. Uh, we should not forget the ligaments of uh, in the area that uh, we have three functional ligaments support the team joint itself, uh, the collateral ligaments, the capsular ligaments, and the temporomandibular ligaments. Also, we have some accessories, uh, accessory ligaments. We have the sphenomandibular ligaments, the stylo ligaments, and uh, stylomandibular ligaments. These ligaments control and restrain the joints and the mandible from dislocation or dislocating. The team joint, uh, as I said earlier, has the temporal bone, the glenoid fossa, the mandible, the condyle, and the disc between them. That what holds the disc is the articular ligaments, and the articular ligaments, or we call it the discal ligaments, they are in the medial and in the distal part of the condyle. Uh, these hold the TM joints, uh, the, the disc from sliding. Uh, the ligaments are collagenous fibers, so they do not stretch, they elongate. Uh, any damage to the ligaments will be elongated, will be not non-repairable. Uh, as you see that the disc with the discal ligaments separate the joint space to superior joint space and inferior joint space, which is full with synovial fluid. Uh, the function of the ligaments is to restrict the movement of the disc from the condyle to attach the disc to the condyle uh, to limit the gross movement of the rot and rotations. And when it's inflamed, it will be painful, uh, will be, uh, patients will have inflammation and pain and uh, become elongated so the disc may get slipped off the condylar head. Uh, the disc and the ligaments and the synovial tissue are encapsulated with what we call the capsular ligaments. The capsular ligaments is like a skirt uh, surround the team joint uh, from the temporal bone uh, down to the neck of the condyle. Uh, this restricts the medial and lateral and inferior forces and the joint restrain or retain uh, synovial fluid. And we have, again, uh, some temporal, we talked about the temporal ligaments. Uh, there are two parts. Uh, there are the oblique ligaments, which rest resist ex excessive dro the dropping of the condyle. And we have the horizontal ligaments, which limit the posterior movement of the condyle. The joint, the team joint is really surrounded with good system. Any damage to any of them may cause inflammation, may cause pain, and may cause uh, 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 this, this dysfunction. Uh, talking about the accessory uh, ligaments, we have the sphenomandibular ligament uh, and we have the stylomandibular ligaments uh, and which they limit the excessive mandibular movements. Also, these are important to uh, restrain uh, the mandible from certain movements. Uh, the most important and the most uh, um, part of the team joint that uh, may cause more trouble to our patients by experiencing some pain is the uh, synovial tissue or the retrodiscal tissue. Uh, we see that this has uh, uh, two bands and the posterior part of it, uh, the superior retrodiscal lamina, and we have the inferior retrodiscal lamina here. Uh, between them, there is retrodiscal tissue. This area is highly innervated highly vascularized. Mostly the pain gets from this area. When patients are in, uh, 
expressing pain most likely will be in this area or from the inflammation in the capsules. Uh, the disc or the meniscus is attached to the front with the anterior discal ligaments that attach to the temporal and to the condyle bones, which really hold the uh, joints properly uh, or the disc properly. Uh, most of us, or we know that the team joint is a compounding joint. And when we say compounding joint means uh, it has three bones, but in, in reality, it's two bones, the condyle and the temporal bone. But uh, some uh, colleagues uh, or some authors, you consider that the disc as a soft bone between the, the, the condyle and the temporal bone. I'm not sure really if I believe in that. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I just wanted to, to share this with you. Uh, as we talked, when uh, the joint moves, uh, when we open our mouth, there are two motions. Uh, we have the rotation and the translation movement, or the hinge between the hinge and, and the gliding movements. Uh, the lower joint part, which really the condyle and the disc, uh, rotate and uh, move forward, uh, a rotation partly forward. Then we have all the joints, the upper joints will be consist of the disc, the condyle, and the eminence uh, helps with the translation or the sliding movement of the condyle and opening. Let us cover a couple of, uh, in, in the next couple of minutes, uh, the mastigatory muscles. Uh, we know we have four groups of, of uh, uh, mastigatory muscles, the temporalis muscles, uh, the uh, masseters, the lateral pterygoid and the medial pterygoid. These are really the muscles of mastigation. And there are other uh, accessory muscles that uh, are, are part of the, the function of, of opening and closing. And uh, But recently uh, with the uh, uh, DC TMD or diagnostic uh, uh, criteria for TMD, they consider using palpating or examining these four uh, groups of, of muscles. Uh, the temporalis muscles is ele elevate the mandible, the masseter elevate uh, also the mandible, so for closure. Uh, the lateral pterygoid muscle helps in uh, protrusion, uh, depression in the shin, and the lateral deviation of the mandible. So uh, we know from when we get the, some clinical aspects of, of the team joints, uh, evaluation and the muscles uh, range uh, uh, evaluation and the range of motion, we we know that it's very important to evaluate uh, the lateral pterygoid muscles and all the mastigatory muscles, but it gives you some hints about what's going on, on uh, in the patient uh, condition. Uh, the medial pterygoid muscle, uh, uh, it's more uh, helps with the masseter to elevate the mandible and in protrusion of the mandible. The digastric, styloid, myohyoid, genohyoid, I consider them are accessory uh, muscles. They will help in uh, depress the mandible, uh, resist when hyoid, infrahyoid muscles uh, stabilize or depress the hyoid bone. And the platysma uh, also helps in uh, depress the mandible against resistance. Uh, it is it is part of the the, um, the presentation is, is to go over uh, evaluating our patients. Uh, we need to take comprehensive history from the patient. Uh, I'm not sure around the world, but in the United States, it's very important uh, to cover a lot of information from the patients uh, to be uh, compensated by the insurance companies and to protect you from uh, lawsuits. Uh, so we need to take the chief uh, complaint from our patients, uh, go over the history of what they are coming here. Is it for the clicking? Is it for the jaw pain? Is it for the team joint pain? Is it muscles pain, limited mouth opening? So we have to address these chief complaints uh, uh, individually, and we have to go over each one individually by chronolog chronological uh, 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 sequence. Uh, talk about the history, talk about uh, the present illness, uh, past treatment, past medications, uh, who did treat the patient. Is this really long, re requires an another uh, presentation. We have to go over the medical history, the review of systems, 
uh, dental history, uh, we should not forget oral history, uh, oral examination, uh, personal history, uh, because we see, will see in the future that uh, our personal lives, uh, of our, our well-being behavior, uh, cognitive behavior, behavior has a lot of things to do with uh, our uh, muscles pain. Uh, physical in evaluation, we need to generally inspect the patient, uh, head and neck, evaluate the team joints, masticatory and cervical muscles, uh, evaluate the cervical spine, intraoral uh, examination, the dental and soft tissue. It's very important uh, to evaluate the intraoral uh, patients. I know we are dentists. We do a better job uh, doing the dental examination and the oral soft tissue examination than physicians. Uh, and finally, the occlusion. And I have a um, little bit to say about occlusion at this presentation as well. Uh, as I mentioned, this area about the range of motion, uh, I'll kind of skip this. Uh, you evaluate the patient by asking them to open wide, watch the deviation or deflection of the uh, opening, uh, ask the patient to uh, slide the mandible to the right, to the left, so to uh, lateral trusion movements, uh, ask the patient to move forward, the mandible forward to so protrusion movement. All this has a lot of uh, uh, help to evaluate uh, any dysfunction in the team joints, right or left or both sides. Uh, it's very important to evaluate the cervical uh, spine, uh, the posture of the patients, uh, evaluate them uh, properly. Uh, by nice uh, evaluation, uh, take time, take two minutes to evaluate. You don't have to do thorough examination because it's not your uh, specialty. And uh, I prefer that you refer the patients to the proper uh, uh, specialist. This examination you can conduct on, on, uh, on a dental chair or have the patient stand up and, and uh, ask them to uh, perform certain uh, examination of the cervical uh, uh, to the neck and uh, with some rotation, side bends. Uh, also evaluate the team joints, opening, closing. Uh, I usually use stethoscope that uh, I can deduct some of the uh, clicking sounds or the mild light click sounds. Uh, palpating the joints uh, to evaluate the discal tissue and uh, synovial uh, area or retrodiscal tissues. Uh, it, is, it is very important. Uh, this is really more uh, history of, of what was used in the past and what we are using today. Uh, in the past, uh, panoramic X-ray was used uh, widely. Now, they are still using it. It's not the, the proper exam uh, uh, imaging of the team joints. It may give us some large lesions of the mandible, of the sinuses, of the teeth, but not the team joints. Uh, 10,000 years ago, we used to have uh, the transcranial or transorbital imaging. Uh, it should be, I, I know it is now in the dental museums. Again, we move a little bit about the talk about the conventional tomography. Uh, it was introduced to the field of orofacial pain and TMJ back in early 1990. Uh, lasted for about 10 years. Uh, it's good. It has a little bit uh, small field that evaluate the team joints, but in general uh, was very good at that point. Uh, we have the medical CT scanner that we use um, rarely now for the team joints because what we have available in our hands. And we should not forget the MRI uh, uh, diagnostic uh, um, imaging uh, for the soft tissue of the team joint, the disc or uh, the, menisc uh, the meniscus uh, or, uh, or the synovial area for any pathologies, tumors or this, uh, displaced disc, etc. Uh, before the MRI, there was what we call arthros arthrography. Uh, where they used to do inject dye in, in, the, in the lower inferior joint space uh, to detect the displaced disc. Uh, this was a very painful, time-consuming, and this before the magnetic uh, uh, resonance imaging, the MRI. Uh, I should not 
I will be bad dentist. Uh, I will be bad oral facial pain dentist if I don't utilize the comb beam CT scan. Uh, in addition to give me a good view of the team joint, uh, the condyle position, uh, it is also helps me to evaluate uh, the whole uh, field that I, uh, I use. And I always recommend to do the full view. Uh, these are some arthritic changes in the team joints, uh, and I'll explain some in the future. So we can see here uh, some eroded surface of the condyles. So this is the benefits of the combin of the TMJ itself alone. Uh, going forward, we are uh, going to talk about TMJ disorders. Uh, I, I, I do have some reservation about talking about TMD uh, in particular, and then have a wide umbrella of symptoms and say this patient has uh, TMD, uh, because it's, it's, it's really not fair uh, to, uh, if patients have uh, inflammation in the team joint uh, or some muscles pain, we call he has TMD and dump all the diagnoses in the TMD umbrella on this patient. Uh, if you have a disc, or uh, torn meniscus in the knee, uh, you don't say I have knee uh, disorders. You say I have knee uh, 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 torn meniscus of the knee, right or left knee. And that's what we have to direct ourselves to this part. Uh, and uh, uh, the International Academy of, uh, of, of uh, uh, for, the for the study of sleep, uh, of the study of pain, uh, ask the, the one of the groups, uh, which I'm proud of it, uh, between uh, we are about 24 dentists from around the world and we came up with the, the, inter, the new international classifications of oral facial pain i will call it uh, we'll discuss it later so we have to talk about uh, the internal derangement uh, which involved the, the joint uh, displaced disc uh, dislocated jaw uh, or injury to the condyle we have the myofacial pain uh, the most common muscles disease involved discomfort, pain, or some spasm. Also, we have the arthritic arthritis and arthralgia referred to a group of degenerative or inflammatory joint disorder that can affect the temporomandibular joint. This is normal joint. Uh, we have the disc uh, between the condyle and uh, uh, eminence. See, we, we have rotation and then we have slight gliding motion. Uh, this is what we like to see in our patients. And we have here the uh, inf superior and inferior retrodiscal uh, uh, ligaments. Uh, this is the joint space here. Uh, when, when we evaluate, we have to look for um, the clicking, the reciprocal clicking, patients open, they have click here, then close, they have another click. So we have reciprocal uh, clicking. Um, there is what we call a reproducible opening click as the patient to open. Uh, you hear the click and the open out, then they can close straight. The same thing on closure. Uh, if you start hearing what we call crepitous sounds, it's like broken glass, uh, sand, uh, and when patients open and close their mouth, we call it uh, crepitous. And this could vary between from fine to coarse crepitous sounds. The, the louder the sounds, the more advanced arthritic changes, but it should not be a diagnostic tool because I've seen where uh, I heard some crepitous sounds sometimes in a few patients. Uh, we did the comb beam and it was nothing. Uh, this could be some torn ligaments. Uh, so collecting the information between the clinical examination uh, between the diagnostic test will give us a better hang, uh, hint about what's going on. Also, we do have the popping when patients come to you, uh, uh, tell you to uh, uh, that they, they heard the loud pop. Uh, that means uh, they are uh, there is subluxation of the condyle and wide opening, and uh, sometimes could be accompanied with another click. Uh, so the, the, the disc clicks first, and then the, the condyle comes out of the socket. What's the internal derangement? The internal derangement is an abnormal relationship of the articular disc to the mandibular condyle, fossa, and articular eminence. Usually, the disc is displaced 
in an anterior lateral uh, medial direction. That's mostly. Uh, you can hear soft click noise does not mean really this displaced disc. In my notes, I may say uh, 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 soft click, but I don't put it as um, displaced disc uh, because it could be some abnormalities in the disc or abnormalities in the bone uh, where that enough support. Uh, when you when you hear loud clicking while opening with deviation present on opposite side, clinically significant for possible anterior disc displacement. Loud clicking while closing with deviation present on the opposite side, clinically significant for possible posterior disc displacement. Uh, let's talk about uh, the team joint. Uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, the anterior medial disc displacement. We have uh, wood reduction, we have wood locking. So if the patient has uh, displaced disc with the reduction, ADD, uh, anterior disc displacement, uh, you'll see some deviation to the affected side and then the patient opens straight uh, with normal opening. If we have displaced disc with intermittent locking, the patients will tell you, I, I heard the catching, uh, or I, I, I heard some click, or I heard, I felt the joint, my joint is, is catching. So they have some, some catching for a few seconds, uh, which are really we call it intermittent locking, or could be lasting for a few minutes. Uh, and then we have the displaced disc without a reduction where the disc, uh, the patients cannot open uh, his or her mouth wide. And we see some deflection in the, in the range of motion where uh, the mandible shifts or deflect to the affected side. Uh, the disc displacement has a vari uh, variation of, of, of uh, form. Uh, we have deviation in form, uh, disc displacement, uh, disc displacement with the condyle. Uh, the disc displacement, Uh, partial displacement, as I mentioned earlier, uh, where the disc displacement only involved the lateral pole with rotation around the medial pole. Uh, there is a complete where the disc entire, entirely is out of place. Uh, Here is the diagram of, of the we start from A. The disc is displaced. Uh, try to open the mouth here. Uh, you hear the click. Uh, then the disc will be on the condyle. You have full opening. Uh, then you uh, close your mouth. Then the disc this this get displaced again, and you hear another click. So these are really the reciprocal click and opening. Uh, as we talked about uh, the uh, the ADD partial ADD, uh, the disc uh, slides badly on the condyle, but remains on the, between the bone and the, between the two bones, the condyle and the eminence. Uh, there is no collapse of the articular disc space, uh, no clicking or deviation, and the pain is variable. It could be uh, no pain, uh, most likely, or, or some mild pain for other reasons. Uh, the cause of this could be uh, elongation of the discal ligaments, uh, thinning uh, of the posterior border of the disc, or muscle stone of the superior lateral pterygoid uh, muscle. Management, uh, joint uh, uh, stabilization splint, and we'll talk about it later, uh, to reduce clinching. Uh, the anterior disc displacement with the reduction that this displaced completely, and terminal and click and terminal closing. Uh, we notice narrowing in the articular disc space, and we notice uh, some pain uh, and uh, by patients. Uh, also, we notice some deviation and opening, as mentioned in the earlier, as showed you in the picture. And we see the patients having a rough time uh, to move them open and close the mandible. Uh, so this is really, these are some signs of, of the displaced disc with the, with the reduction. Uh, so we have deviation to the affected side, and then in the end of the range of motion, we have normal incisal opening. This is the displaced disc. Uh, as you see, uh, this is a full opening. Uh, 
closure, you hear click here, then you open, you hear, you, you hear a click, and when it's captured, uh, wide opening, normal opening, then uh, so forth. So we have, these are really the, uh, the way how we hear the clicking. Uh, the, dis the displace disk without reduction is the clinical closed lock. Uh, we see that the disk is positioned here, try to open and push, we push, we push to try to open, but uh, the disk obstruct the candle uh, from moving forward. Uh, you close and then there is no click uh, in either ways. Uh, but we have limited mouth opening and we do have deflection to the affected side. The management uh, could be uh, interior positioning splint, uh, maxillary with guide the ramp uh, full time, uh, could be during the daytime, um, uh, man max mandibular appliance, uh, maxillary appliance at night. Uh, these days, I don't really give the patient to wear their appliances 24 hours and may build a ramp. Uh, to advance their mandible for nighttime only and try to teach the patient for self-manipulation to unlock their job. Uh, so when we do have displaced this without reduction, that means uh, we have a block of the condyle and collapse of the, the, the articular disc space. Uh, closed Locked, uh, we depend on the patient's history. Mostly they will tell you that I had the clicking for a while and suddenly I was not able to open my mouth. So, uh, and uh, I am experiencing more pain. Usually they will experience more pain and when it's acute case, uh, but over time the, um, the, 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 the pain may subside. Uh, you need to do clinical ex examination. You have to request some imaging. I usually don't, uh, if the best imaging for displaced disc is, is really to uh, uh, the MRI to look at the soft tissue, which the MRI, I usually don't order MRI of the team joints except when I fail in the treatment to see why I failed. Uh, I probably do more MRI of the brain and uh, uh, cervical area for fear of, of tumor or cancer or uh, uh, other pa pathologies that uh, affect the orofacial pain. Um, and then we would do uh, joint mobilization. Uh, the prognosis is de depends on, on uh, the acute or chronic case. Uh, the, the more acute, the better results. Uh, the younger the patients, the better results, if that's really the diagnosis. Uh, the more chronic uh, condition, we may not consider uh, any other treatment except that there's pain and severe dysfunction. And we'll talk about that later. So the acute closed locks symptoms, limited mouth opening pain, deflection toward the affected side, decreased contralateral movements. This is the displaced disc. Uh, you see here the conduct try to open. Uh, the disc is stuck here. Uh, there is some stretching of the ligaments uh, and the posterior ligaments of the disc. It could be the ligaments are torn mostly, uh, so there are some, some uh, uh, stretching. So this is really where we have the disc here. Uh, it's obstructing the condyle from moving forward. Management uh, will be uh, inset to relieve the pain, uh, reduce the inflammation and joint stabilization. We have, uh, we can, if we need to do some uh, management at the office, I, I usually give the patients anti-inflammatory medication, give them some muscle relaxant, uh, some sedative like Valium or Xanax, uh, and we try to uh, do man manipulation. Sometimes we do auricular temporal block, uh, spray and stretch. Uh, sometimes in the same visit, uh, we'll take impressions uh, patients come back in our two hours, uh, we give them an emergency splint uh, therapy to uh, maintain the reduced uh, locked uh, joint. Uh, anterior positioning, uh, it's, it's, it's common uh, used by other dentists. Uh, we don't recommend it because not evidence-based. I use it every once in a while, probably once every two years for certain patients. Uh, which help them to reduce uh, the pain. Uh, 
uh, when we have unsuccessful treatment, uh, does, does, what do we need to do? Uh, do we get the patient to uh, be referred to a surgery uh, or we just treat the patient of the disc? This all depends on the pain and the dysfunction. Uh, I, I have uh, recommended both ways to the patients, uh, depends on the chronicity and, and the pain. Uh, we have a couple of options for surgical intervention like uh, arthroscopic surgery and uh, total or, and open joint surgery where they uh, remove the disc, we call it disectomy and they uh, remove some uh, fatty tissue from the abdomen and put it between the team joints. I have very good oral surgeon here at Henry Ford Hospital. Uh, he does most of my, my uh, surgeries. In the past, before I start working with this uh, oral surgeon, Dr. Barbetta, I, I, I used to send it to local oral surgeons with uh, they do arthrocentesis. Uh, it was not all the time successful. Uh, the complete displaced disc, and maybe patients have uh, normal opening, uh, there's variable pain, and there's deflection to a affected side. We will already mentioned that. Uh, we should not forget arthralgia. Arthralgia is inflammation, is pain in the team joint. Uh, it's continuous deep pain, characteristics of, of the arthralgia. Uh, function, increased pain, uh, secondary central excitatory effects. So if the pain becomes more chronic, maybe there are some central uh, uh, excitatory uh, effects from the brain, uh, which is really uh, very important to, to evaluate in the future. Uh, also, the arthralgia could be capsulitis, synovitis, uh, retrodiscitis, uh, degenerative joint diseases, uh, osteoarthrosis, and osteoarthritis. It's a really long uh, subject to talk about, uh, and we I see more these days. Uh, not the, I've been seeing the, uh, young patients. Uh, the youngest patient was nine years old with confirmed diagnosis of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which now they are not using the the term uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. They are using it using uh, juvenile idiopathic degenerative arthritis of the team joints. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the inter international uh, classifications or, or official pain, ICAP, uh, we have uh, uh, decided to go over these classifications. Uh, we have the primary temporal medullary joint pain and we have the secondary. I don't want to go over this because it's a very long uh, classifications. I'll talk briefly about my official pain or muscle pain. Uh, and also this part of the myofacial, uh, 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 excuse me, it's part of the ICAP, uh, the International Classifications of Pain. We have the primary myofacial pain and we have secondary myofacial pain. Uh, we, before we, we, before we um, uh, talk about muscles, we have to understand uh, the normal muscles and what factors lead to uh, the disease and pain. Uh, we have to think about physiology. We have to think about anatomy and not to think about occlusion at this, at this point. Um, so this is very important for to evaluate our, our patients. We have uh, uh, our clinical model is uh, we have normal function, patients or pers a person comes uh, uh, without uh, any previous history of pain. Um, we have uh, something happened, uh, local uh, uh, event, uh, trauma or uh, systemic problems may initiate uh, the pain. So an event can alter the normal masticatory muscles function. Uh, we have the normal, we have the event, we have the contraction of the muscles. This is the old classifications of the DC uh, TMD. Uh, so patient may have uh, event, but has something hard, uh, cause some contraction of the muscles, uh, like some kind of muscle spasm, uh, maybe become muscle soreness. If we solve the issue, uh, we uh, control the 
the, the source of the problem, we can resolve uh, uh, the, the, the pain and, and the, the complaints, then patients back to normal function. Now with the new classifications, we have uh, an event caused some uh, primary acute myofascial pain. And this is may cause, uh, depends on, on uh, uh, what can happen next. Uh, are we going to ignore it? Uh, is the patient uh, uh, seeking uh, help or may put it on hold? Or that the, the factor or the source of the cause of the pain persisted? Then we may have some chronic infrequent primary myofascial pain on and off throughout the past five uh, years, five months or a few weeks. Uh, till when the problem becomes more uh, frequent, uh, then patients may have some uh, develop from acute uh, to chronic uh, uh, condition through the time. Uh, we need to manage these patients properly. Uh, we need to make sure uh, the pain does not become chronic because when the pain becomes chronic, it will be more the central nervous system involved and we have more uh, issues to be uh, concerned about it, uh, uh, like uh, uh, fibromyalgia or uh, uh, or other uh, um, trigger points, as we call it. So we have the chronic infrequent primary myofascial uh, or official pain, uh, then become chronic frequent primary uh, myofascial or official pain without uh, pain referral. Uh, and this uh, over time may develop to, to be more uh, cause some trigger points. So we have referred pain. Uh, so if, if the pain got more chronic and for certain circumstances may develop pain with the referred pain and we call the uh, trigger points. Let me see if the video will work. If you palpate the joint, the thought fiber will be moving around your finger. The treatment for all these, the map here, it varies between if it's primary acute case, uh, become chronic, uh, centrally mediated myalgia. Uh, then we have to uh, be careful about uh, developing some muscle spasm because of the fatigued muscles. And we should not forget uh, that systematic or systemic uh, myalgia disorders like fibromyalgia. Uh, we Talk briefly about uh, uh, muscle spasm, uh, tragic dyskinesia. Let me share the video with you here. Like they've been real bothersome for about the last six months. And uh, three years ago, the symptoms were just pain on both sides. That's correct? Right. And six months ago, do you remember anything happened? No, nothing happened. And... Uh, the involuntary muscle movements or jaw movements that you are aware of it now. Uh, do you remember the last, the first time somebody brought it to your attention or you noticed it yourself? Uh, I never noticed it myself. I just noticed that. So, so this patient uh, has dreaded dyskinesia because she's taken some of the anti uh, 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 psychotic medications. And this patient also has some uh, uh, involuntary muscle spasm, uh, what's called dystonia, or dystonia is, is uh, involuntary muscle spasm. Uh, do we, how do we treat it? Uh, but most likely both ask treatment uh, or other medications. Uh, current lit literature does not uh, indicate that uh, uh, we should look, let me rephrase it, we should look at the general picture of the patient's uh, complaints. And, and uh, we found, or not we, the, the researcher in the orofacial pain field found that anxiety, dep uh, uh, depression, disorders, somatization, uh, uh, all these and, and trauma and post-traumatic injuries cause uh, increase of the pain. Uh, we should for, should not forget uh, this uh, picture, uh, which really was uh, created by a, a group of uh, for the study um, called the Opera Study, uh, which uh, 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 talking about the psychological distress, uh, the state of pain amplifications, and arthralgia and my myofascial pain. Uh, 
uh, we should not forget the emotional trauma, uh, our soldiers, uh, your soldiers, everybody in war, uh, especially what's going on around the world these days. Uh, we should not forget the emotional and phys physical or sexual abuse. Uh, we should not forget for every per person, not only males or uh, females, it could be females and uh, males and children. Uh, they found that uh, trauma may cause a lot of uh, uh, increase uh, or official pain. Uh, so the, the, these are the symptoms of the muscle pain uh, uh, during most of the pains during function, uh, some muscle tenderness uh, on palpation, limited the range of motion, feeling the muscle weakness or fatigue, and we have jaw as rigid on manipulation. Uh, treatment, uh, eliminate the, the etiology of the cause, uh, give patients some uh, anti-inflammatory medications, some muscle relaxant, uh, and no exercise or physical therapy in the acute case. Uh, let's uh, talk about myositis, which inflammation in the muscles. It could be trauma or acute muscle strain and uh, customized to use. Uh, certain muscles and uh, infection, local infection, and protracted muscle spasm. Uh, also, the patient, the muscles are are in pain, uh, tenderness and, and over the entire muscles, uh, restricted range of motion, and due to pain and swelling and possible swelling of the muscles. And we should be careful about uh, cellulitis. Treatment, uh, restrict the function in acute phase, uh, no exercises in acute phase, no anesthetic blockage because fear of infection uh, that you spread the infection around the, the tissue. Uh, use anti-inflammatory medication and sometimes you may need to uh, send the patient for CT scan for uh, any, uh, for uh, make sure that there is no uh, uh, infection in the adjacent tissue and probably for IV, uh, antibiotic through IV. Now, what's the effect of chronic pain? Uh, we have physical function, uh, psychological mor morbidity, uh, social consequences, and social uh, uh, as well. So we have the ability to perform active daily living, uh, sleep disturbance. We have depression, anger, anxiety, long uh, loss of lung, uh, of self-esteem. So this is the effect of chronic pain. Also, the, our relationships, uh, intimacy, sexual activity, social isolation, healthcare cost, uh, disability, uh, loss of work. So, uh, this these are really very important to 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 consider when we deal when we are dealing with patients with chronic pain. Uh, management of the bite splints. Uh, there are removable devices that cover the dentition. Uh, there are too many of them uh, that will help uh, uh, in our with our patients. Some some of them call them bite guards, night guards, closure guard, bite splint, closure orthotic device, etc. Because we treat uh, medical condition, we call it the orthotic team team J orthotic of or orthotic devices, and that's the really what uh, what we call it here. Uh, but everyone. Uh, in the, even the states call it differently. Uh, principle of management, most patients with TMG disjoint dysfunction achieve good uh, symptoms relief with uh, conservative therapy. These are by Randolph. Uh, stability achieved in six to 12, uh, within uh, six to 12 months of most cases. Uh, Painless mandibular function is possible with displacement uh, disc in many patients. Uh, these are some uh, uh, literatures. Um, also, the principle of management, we talk about uh, the physical diagnosis, the goal of our evaluation should develop of a prioritized, we have to prioritize the treatment uh, to be able to get uh, what we are uh, looking for. Uh, and we should not forget the power of placebo. Uh, I have seen it in my practice, and I'm sure everybody sees it uh, in their practice. Uh, we have the oral plants have to alter the bite, uh, uh, and we have to be uh, aware of that. Uh, then prevent wear of the mandible, uh, reduce the bruxism and parafunction habit, uh, treat muscle pain, 
uh, treat painful team joints. Uh, research disagree on how appliances work and what design is most favorable. I, I, I face it every day uh, with my colleagues. I face it every day with my patients. They ask me how the appliance work. Um, sorry. Um, the guidelines for the appliance wear is joint, should be joint specialization appliance. Uh, um, should be a mandibular position appliance, uh, should be soft tissue, uh, soft appliance, uh, pivot appliances. I, I do believe that uh, joint stabilization appliances, the flat maxillary uh, hard acrylic appliance will be the best uh, solution as per, uh, uh, um, per the, um, the evidence-based treatment. These are the function of the appliances. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go over it uh, uh, with you because of the lack of time. I'll probably talk more about uh, other issues. Uh, this my favorite appliance is the flat appliance, uh, upper acry hard acrylic appliance. Uh, I would I want to bring your attention. Don't try to avoid use these uh, uh, the girl appliance or anterior positioning appliance for long term. Uh, you can use it for short term, not full time. Uh, this patient developed uh, posterior open bite from using this appliance, which is called GULB appliance. Uh, see the development, and uh, now the dentist wants to do orthodontic treatment. Uh, my background, I'm an orthodontist. I don't know how they will be treating this patient without extraction and without surgery. On the right side, the uh, uh, case you see posterior pivots. Uh, there's a high increase of, of the acrylic here. Uh, patient uh, developed open bite by hyper eruption of the posterior molar on, the, on one side. So we have to be very careful when we make our appliances. This, this, these appliances belong to one patient. One patient came to me with this kind of uh, bag of, of appliances. So what do you use? And she did this herself, this one, an upper left corner. Uh, mandibular repositioning appliance help in improve relationship of the disc, condyle and in eminence, decrease adverse joint loading, uh, decrease joint pain, and decrease joint noises. Uh, this is uh, we, what I do. Uh, I build a ramp uh, in this position, in this area here, and ask the patient to advance the mandible after they self-manipulate the mandible to uh, reduce the, the disc. They call it recapture. I'm not sure really if I will get complete recapture, but at least the patient uh, will experience less pain. Uh, that's why when the patient wears the appliance. So we have joint stabilization appliances. We have uh, mandibular repositioning appliances and provisional appliances. Uh, let me skip a little bit here uh, for the treatment. Uh, we give the patient uh, education, uh, uh, pamphlets, uh, home care, uh, physical medicine, pharmacotherapy, fluid splint, behavior medicine. Uh, we treat the patient in a palliative way, repair and uh, regeneration of the disc or the ligaments, whatever we, you want to consider it, and it should be a reversible treatment. Uh, it should be ortho, orthopedic stabilization. Uh, it should be, it should not be irreversible. And this is really for phase two. Some people do phase two treatment, which uh, I don't think it is necessary on certain patients. Uh, occlusal equilibration, uh, do I believe that uh, very uh, uh, selected patient, the, you may need to do occlusal equilibration if the restoration is high, uh, if uh, the patient develops severe arthritic changes and alter the, the, the joints uh, and the occlusion and patient doesn't want to get uh, surgical corrections. Uh, orthodontic uh, overlays you can use. Uh, surgical approach, uh, as we mentioned earlier, arthros arthrocentesis, which really I don't refer the patient for this procedures anymore. Uh, I send it more to arthroscopic surgery and open joint surgeries. 
We provide the patient with the stabilization team joint appliance, decrease the pressure on the joints. Uh, we talked about it this earlier um, to improve the function, decrease the uh, adverse joint loading and decrease pain and noise. Uh, we ask the patient uh, to win themselves up the appliance after a few years. I have patients come back 10, 10 years later after I, they stop coming to me they are still using the same appliance. As long as the appliance is really stabilization appliance flat, uh, we should not worry about it, but on occasions the occlusion will change even with these kind of appliances. Uh, uh, pharmacy is the management of medication and side effects is very important. Uh, we have to look at uh, short uh, versus long-term medication use. Uh, why, why do we need to use the medication for a couple of weeks? Why we need to use it for the whole month? Uh, the whole month or two months? Uh, we have to depend on a on, on few factors to consider medications. We have the diagnosis. What, what's the patient's uh, diagnosis or diagnosis? Uh, the patient's age, uh, past medical history, past medication history, past physical uh, psychiatry history, including su substance abuse, uh, you have to make sure really these patients uh, may not be placed on certain medications, allergies, allergies, and current medication that they are using. Uh, as you see, it's it's really it's, it's a wide range of, of uh, factors we have to be worried about when prescribe uh, medications. Which medication is the best? Uh, we have to look at the pharmacokinetics, uh, contraindications, drug interaction mode of uh, elimination of metabolism, uh, adverse effects, and structures. So these are the treatment uh, uh, recommended for TMD. I support TMD. I should really not use TMD. Uh, we have splint occlusion therapy, physical therapy, uh, uh, therapeutic injections like uh, trigger points, like uh, acupuncture, Botox treatment, uh, so, uh, psychological therapies, uh, uh, pharmacotherapy, TMJ therapy. Uh, he's talking to his friend. I said, uh, I feel a lot better since I ran out of uh, those pills he, you gave me, Alex, to his physician. Uh, we should get to know our patients, uh, uh, our patient with TMJ problems or with muscle pain. Uh, there is a doctor-patient relationship is essential for successful treatment. It, it varies between us as dentists or official pain dentists or physicians or any, any uh, healthcare providers. Uh, we have to listen to our patients. Wow, your cholesterol has, a, has me really worried and, and the patient has injury. So the physician, the dentist should really look at the patients and, and, and examine them properly. Do not jump into treatment too quickly. Uh, communicate well with your patients. Uh, don't uh, jump to occlusion, don't put braces. Uh, uh, you have to, to look at our patient properly. Uh, we have to think about our patient's symptoms, about the clinical examination. It's uh, our brain is your, or your brain is your most powerful tool when we evaluate oral facial pain patients or TMD patients. Uh, this is a thinking sport, uh, not a doing sport. So we have to think, we have to uh, come up with the right uh, uh, plan uh, after doing, uh, coming up with the right diagnosis, after asking or requesting the right diagnostic testing. The most important duties of the dental professional is very, very, very good ways to end this presentation. We do cure sometimes. Uh, we don't, especially for oral facial pain, we don't cure every time we see patients. We relieve often. We comfort always our patients. But take this message, do no harm. Do no harm. Don't do a reversal treatment, then you feel bad about going back. So now I'm done with my presentation and uh, I'd like to go back to the panel. Uh, Dr. Sulanga, uh, Sulagna and Dr. Uh, uh, Ratan Suthi for, for question and answers from the 
attendees. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Caspo. It was a very interesting and extremely well explained presentation. I'm sure our students and all our colleagues and viewers have definitely understood each and every every slide even non dentist and basic scientists like me i could actually follow every slide it was so beautifully picture pictorially depicted prof uh, thank, you like thank you thank you i think i like to thank you very much and i know uh, one hour is not fair for the topic uh, but uh, i tried to condense the information as much as i can uh, now with these days uh, we have a lot of evidence based treatment uh, not really somebody is dreaming of making certain treatments that it works for me. Uh, there are a lot of research these days, and I'm sure you are aware of it. Uh, and at one point, I may I like to share it with everybody uh, in, your, in your school or around the world. Absolutely, bro. So uh, I don't find much questions from the viewers, but I, I have a question for you, Prof. I'm, I'm curious about one thing. Like uh, in my doctoral research, I had done uh, immunomodulation of septic arthritis in synovial joint. So I'm curious, in case of septic arthritis of TMJ, uh, what antibiotics or what antibiotic uh, and NSAID combinations are in use? What do you suggest? Well, uh, Cipro probably, I don't know really what's what, why the name, like Cipro would be good uh, medication, antibiotic is, is really a powerful uh, 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 antibiotic. And personally, I like to use naproxen uh, as anti-inflammatory medication as first line. Uh, very rarely, and I really don't use any narcotic or any opioids uh, in my practice. If I do, I use it for short term. Uh, but these are the two uh, uh, medications I use in, in, in these kind of conditions. Okay, Prof. Thank you so much. You're so I will just request uh, uh, Prof. Ratnasoti to uh, deliver the thank you note. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dr. Kespo. Yeah, Dr. Caspo. Yes, yes, Dr. Sophie. Yeah, uh, a wonderful presentation. But I have got uh, two questions for you. Uh, I would like to know whether the term ginglimo myoarthrodial joint is another synonym for temporomandibular joint. Is it still being used? No, no, we, we don't use it. It's, it's really more about the definition of the, the joint itself. It's, we don't use that at, you know, at, at all. Uh, but uh, when we were in dental school, we were taught, uh, you know, to use another name. That name uh, actually there was in certain textbooks, but I think it is very uh, outdated now. That's correct. That's it's, it's really more yeah. common. It, it, yes. it used to be out uh, the description of the joint it's, itself, not the team joint itself. Yes. And uh, my second question is. Uh, where will the horizontal horizontal axis of the joint be for the TMJ? Like for our elbow joint and our knee joint, the horizontal axis is at the through the joint, right? Uh, do you agree with me, uh, Doctor Caspo? Well, the I'm horizontal. Sure. Right. I'm sorry. The horizontal axis of articulation. It, it is really very hard, very hard with the team joints to to come up with the axis because the occlusion there are two, a, two two parts, the right and left joints, and and with yes. the different part of uh, the occlusion uh, could be bad, could be good occlusion. So it's it's personally, I will probably more consider what's the most comfortable position or uh, comfortable positions. Okay, so uh, I mean we were. I, as far as I know, that the horizontal axis of articulation is an imaginary line drawn drawn through the joint. Uh, but in the TM joint, it's a little lower than a normal elbow joint or a knee joint because of the translation movement and the rotation movement. That's correct. And because there are two joints at the same time. Function. Yes, at the same time. Yes, it is so bilateral really joint. To, to, to 
to come up with the really one one uh, uh, central uh, access. Yeah, if you draw a line through the through the right and left TM join, an imaginary line, but the horizontal axis will be at a lower level, slightly lower level, one okay, or uh, one point five. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was uh, a very interesting topic that. Uh, when we were in dental school that they were talking because all joints, they are mainly through the joint, but at the TM joint, it is- Lower. Uh, yeah, slightly lower. Okay, so with good. this, uh, Dr. Caspo, I would like to thank you on behalf of Massa University. And uh, we will like to have you back or if we want to continue with the orofacial pain, uh, 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 that uh, certification, or something like that. If any students are keen, we will definitely contact you. That's thank you very much, and uh, really, I I like to thank you again for this uh, uh, great opportunity. And uh, I, I hope I'm making some uh, um, uh, dent in in, in the dental community of in orofacial pain and TMJ. Uh, it, it is an honor uh, to be present here to your. Uh, students, your colleague at uh, Massa University. Uh, and I really thank you personally and, and this invitation and this uh, um, opportunity. Thank you very much, Prof. With this thank note, you. we are ending the broadcast today. Thank you very much for attending our faculty webinar. Thank you.